All through my career, I listen to my intuition. It doesn't matter what other people tell me, and 99% of the time it was right. I knew that Spurs is the, is the place for me. It was time to move in. Premier League was, again, completely different. I needed a couple of months to get used to it, but after that, it was my league. Dimitar, great to see you. Let's go right back to the start of your incredible journey. Growing up, what was it like in Bulgaria? Were you always football daft? Me, yes, because my dad was a football player, my mom was a handball player and sporting family. And me and my brother, of course, had no choice but to go into that way of living. Uh, firstly, long jump, uh, basketball, when, until you find where you're good at, what you love. And the moment I found football, that was my true love, first love, and then we started doing it. And what was it like facilities-wise? Were you a, a street, kids in the street? Streets, yeah. always on the streets. Uh, how do you call it? Asphalt thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in the schools, at front of where we used to live. Uh, no grass, so we go out there, you play, you fall down, your knees all in blood, you get up, you continue, and that's how you became, in a way, a man, even if you're still a boy. When I used to play with the big, big boys, bigger than me all the time because I wanted to challenge myself. And my dad insisted of playing with the big, big boys, big men, because even if they hurt you, along the process, you're going to become stronger. And that kind of environment and not playing on grass, did that actually stand you in good stead for when you became yeah, a for professional? Sure, for sure. This is where, looking back, when you're in the moment, you don't appreciate that. Even if you're if you, in a way, know that it's going to help you. But when you're a boy, you just enjoy. You don't pay attention much where you play. You just play. And when you play with the big ones, uh, you get better. Then you have that street credit back home when, when it's a big thing. When you're walking around the streets and everybody knows you and say, that's, that's not uh, my, my father is Ivan Berbatov. And they say, that's not the boy of Ivan Berbatov. They say, this is Dimitar Berbatov, you know? and you have that street cred, it makes you feel good and it makes you go and train even more. Was that quite a big thing then for you, yeah, for having was, such a, a father like that? It was because uh, to be a, a grown up and be a son of a football player, as is around the world, if you ask, is a difficult thing. You need to get out of that shadow. And w when you get out of that shadow, you feel satisfied with yourself. You are your own man. So for me, it was very important to get separated from that and try to build my own legacy. Was there a point, or when was the point where you thought, I'm particularly better than all these other boys at, at this? Well, listen, not to brag about, but uh, early age, I, I knew that I'm, I'm good enough and I had the talent in my neighborhood because people, uh, the boys were rally around me and they wanted to be part of my team. So uh, I knew that I had the talent and I was, like, as I told you, street credit-wise, I was very good position around the boys and everybody there. Uh, but at the same time, my, my will to want more and more and more, like that greedy, greediness that we all have for different things, mine was to become better and better and better. And it led me to, to start training with the team in, in my hometown and then start to move into the uh, um, climbing that ladder of success in, in football in Bulgaria. Because I wanted to be better and better and better. My ambition was bigger than my fear. I was afraid, but I wanted to prove everyone that I'm good enough and I'm going to succeed. And ending up in the, in the capital, Sofia, it's where my journey actually started with the first team of CSKA Sofia, going and playing there. Uh, going again a bit through difficult times, but that shaped me uh, to becoming a, a man later on in my life. So it was an early test of your mentality, really, never mind your talent. A lot, a lot of, of that, yes, because everybody have their, their uh, story. Everybody have their uh, problems in their life. Everybody going through a journey full of challenges, in a way. You, me, everybody. In mine was that at early age, sport age, I was able to go through a difficult period where the fans were booing me uh, when I missed a couple of chances and my team didn't win and they lost the championship and everybody was against me and I was only 18, you know, and uh, this was very hard for me. But again, overcome that moment helped me to, to, to become strong after that with the challenges that were ahead of me but I still didn't know about them. 
What about English football? Did you get much of it in Bulgaria growing no, up? No, back watch? at the time, not so much. No. Not so much. But as I said, and I told many people, early glimpse of English football was of Alan Shear smashing goals here and there everywhere and raising that hand. There was a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment I saw this, it just resume with me, just just click with me, and I, I fell in love in that with that thing, you know. And I was like, that's the guy. I want to score goals like this from everywhere. How was Germany? How was the Bundesliga? How was life there? This was probably the 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 most important decision of my life that it was the right thing to do to leave early Bulgaria as it sat it was and to go to Germany because this is where I became a, a good football player, but I became a man because I go by myself everywhere I go by myself because first and foremost I want to help myself and always look for the problem or the solution inside me. And for the help, I look inside me first, and then I ask for other help. So I go by myself. I didn't know the language. And German language, let me tell you, that's very tough. It is. I did it at school. I can't tough. remember much about it. <laughs> and I go, new environment, everything new, new team. And I was very shy, very private back then as a football player. Everybody can testify to that. So it was very tough for me uh, to fit straight into the team from the Balkans, a boy. But the good thing was that there was a Croatian people uh, around the team and in the team Croatian players. For me, I found, I found my second home and now I wanted to build on my development as a player. And at first it was tough for me because Germany, they're very strict and everything is in schedule and in order. So you need to follow rules. And me coming from the Balkans, we are a bit more different. You know, we, we like to party, we like different stuff, you know. But if you want really to succeed, you can find the balance in all these things. And even if I took some wrong turns along the way uh, going to Germany, my compass was always in the right direction, which was try to reach as far as possible in my career, coming from a small country. So they helped me to stay focused on my dream in Leverkusen. I'm forever grateful for them. We are like a family there, all these people who I still keep in touch this day with some of them. And this was the best school for me in Leverkusen. That's why so many good players are coming from Leverkusen and going to different clubs like Son, mm -hmm. he was in Leverkusen, uh, Arturo Vidal, he was in Leverkusen, Tony Cross was in Leverkusen. The scouting system of this team is unbelievable. All through my career, I listen to my intuition. It doesn't matter what other people tell me, uh, my close friends or family also tell me I listen to them, but in the end, I made my choice on my intuition. And probably 99% of the time it was right. And I knew that Spurs is the, is the place for me. It was time to move in. And English Premier League was, again, completely different, very fast, very physical. Some of the players I needed to face in my first games in, in Spurs shirt. I never saw them in German Bundesliga players like this, like wardrops and go like this, you know, I'm a bodybuilder, <laughs> <laughs> which was funny and terrifying at the same time. I like to challenge myself, but I was thinking, what the, I mean, come on, we're playing football here. I needed a couple of months to get used to it, but after that, it was my league. Listen, I, I've done one of these long conversations with Robbie Keane, and he says, I mean, you know how much he loves you. I'm yeah. not going to embarrass you. But he says, by far, the happiest time of his football career was playing up alongside yeah. you. What, what, what was so special about you two in tandem? Did, it, did you just hit it off on the training pitch straight away? I think we did. I think we did. Uh, I don't know, that understanding is very rarely seen. This is something with Son in, in Kane at the moment yeah, as well. I was going to say that. It looked a very yeah. similar. With me and Kino, it, it was, you can say it was straight away. We need, just needed a couple of matches uh, to, to, to find our rhythm in a way. But the funny thing is that outside of the pitch, we didn't spoke much or uh, socialize a lot. Because I was, again, very shy and very private man. Uh, I rarely uh, invite, invite someone in my, in my inner circle. And when Kino saw that, he had no problem with that. He respected that because we, everybody is different. And when you show me that respect, I will give it back to you twice as much. And then I can play with you on the pitch. And even if you don't have understanding, on the pitch is what's important for me. But with Kino straight away, I don't know, no selfishness. 
if you're in a better position, I'll give you the ball. He give you the good ball back to me. We made better players because of this, and we grew and grew and grew together. And together we brought that trophy for Spurs as well. I don't think we were good enough to be champions back then. United were so good. Uh, but that trophy was, was the thing that we needed to win, and we won it. Uh, we have good quality in and around the team, but most importantly, the togetherness of the group was very good. And everybody respected the other person, no matter how they were. Because one is more shy, the other is high-fiving people, giving hugs and kisses around the place. But everybody respect the other one. The, the, um, uh, the difference about the other one, because as I said many times, we're all different. And when we step onto the pitch, we supported each other. Probably, as you say, maybe sometimes we were able to do a bit much, but we are leaking too many goals at times. So. It was good to watch, though. But it was entertaining. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> Results 4-4, four, 6-4, four, four, seven threes. <laughs> you go to White Hart Lane, you're going to watch something special. I wanted to be part of, of this team. I wanted to be part around these this great legends of football players, and I was. And I appreciate everything that happened in that second season of the second title. Honestly, believe me, I was running around my house, golden boot, medal, going crazy. So, how did you find out about Manchester United's interest? Well, my manager told me one day, just out of the did blue. Did he? Yeah, like it's unusual, isn't it? Casual. <laughs> By the way, you know, United is after you. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I say something else, but I don't want to say yeah, it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, sitting there and, and trying to comprehend and feel how my excitement is growing and growing and growing. And the moment I knew that, then I knew that I need to step up my game a bit more to prove that I deserve that, that they are chasing me. But at the same time, I wanted to stay grounded uh, with my feet on the ground because my head at times will start to be lightheaded and confused and you can get distracted. You know how it is. And it, it did prevent me to have better games from time to time. But it was the sign that my hard work, talent, uh, it's paying off and that dream move is coming closer to me. What did you make about the size of the club? Because everybody says this to me, you look at it from the outside, it's a big club. And then when you get in it and you're one of theirs, it, it's all consuming. Well, I was, I was in, in, intimidated by everything. Yeah. And this is where probably that uh, background of coming from a small country kicks in. Uh, and that, that now I'm in the big league, but at the same time, I'm still the same boy from, from Bulgaria. And that intimidating factor is, is, is coming to play. It shouldn't, but it, it comes a little bit, creeps up, and it, because it's like oh, Gary Neville, Scores, Giggs, Ronaldo, Rooney. Oh my, oh my God. You know, and I was thinking to myself, I made it, but at the same time, I'm in a, in a, a way of, of, that, of the players and intimidated. But after that, after that process of five, ten minutes, then you need to stand your own ground. I said it as well before. You need to stand your own ground, otherwise they will walk over you, these, all these players with big egos. And you need to stand your ground. If they challenge you, you accept it, you challenge back, in a way. And it helps me, and I can do that easily because I always been good with myself. I'm, I'm, how do you say that? I'm um, self in enough. How do you self say confident? That? Self confident, but I can. I'm easily. If I can sit here alone, I can do that. I have no problem. I don't need other attention. I don't mm -hmm. need other approval. I know I can. I can be good enough to be part of this. So always, I, I, I was there for the challenge. If someone challenged me on the pitch. Um, yell at me, I yell back because I wanted to win, you know, and this is how I, I, I prove, of course, with the games, with the goals that I can be part of this group. Your first season, you lifted that. Yep. So you keep referring to the boy from Bulgaria. Of all the things that you did do, having watched English football from afar, when you got your hands on that and you were a Premier League champion, 
How on earth did that feel? Yeah, it felt good in my first season. Uh, although I, 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 I know that I should have done a bit better in that season, but I was pretty uh, happy with what I have done in, in the season. In the end, to culminate with winning the trophy, it was uh, something that never other Bulgarian have done before. And again, I felt proud because every time I step onto the pitch, on that stand there was the flags of every country who represented United. And every time I'm walking down the tunnel, I can see the Bulgarian flag waving proudly there. And it always gave me a goosebumps. Another trophy followed, and another Premier League title, uh, a joint golden boot, Premier League team of the season. I mean, you had a lot of fun at Old Trafford over those years, didn't you? I did, I did, of course. I had, uh, I had great moments with, uh, with the United team. And again, probably the, the second title was even more sweeter for myself because I was, I was the top scorer of my team and in the Premier League. Uh, and that makes me um, really, really proud and happy with, with that season in particular. Uh, and again, it, it shows you that when you're around winners, in that environment of winners, and you want to learn, and you fit into the environment, the environment will make you a winner along the way. If you don't want to learn, and you try to change that environment, the environment is going to kick you out. You know, so, I wanted to be part of, of this team. I wanted to be part around these this great legends and football players. And I was. And I appreciate everything that happened. And in that second season with second title, I was honestly, believe me, I was running around my house, golden boot, meadow, going crazy. Quite rightly so. <laughs> and all the hat tricks. I mean, United fans and, still talk uh, about the one against Liverpool to this day. Yeah, and I still keep the balls from my hat tricks. And that against Liverpool, I know it's a special one, but honestly, all my hat tricks and goals are special to me. I'm sure they are, but you've got to appreciate, as a United player, how to win the fans to score a hat trick yeah, against exactly, Liverpool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That was a special. It hasn't been done for 64 years, Dimitar. I, I didn't knew that before the game. Yeah, 60. Well, that's. I'm trying to give you an idea of the accomplishment with, within the support. I wasn't big on statistics back then, and uh, learning that after the game was was really something. Whoa, really? Okay. It's a good achievement, actually. Incredible. And uh, done it against Liverpool, especially with the second goal, to have something like this in the back, it's, it's even more special. Forces gathering in the middle for Manchester United. Berbatov! Wonderful! Absolutely fantastic! A sublime goal from this rapidly improving Bulgarian. You know, it was, a, it was a great goal, but in the end of the day, when I go back home, I still needed to take out the trash, you know? So it's still a normal day. Uh, I was telling, I was trying to tell my wife, you know what happened today? And you know what I score? How do I do? I, I smash everything. The trash. <laughs> so I'm taking, Don't do the bins. <laughs> <laughs> taking the trash. I'm still smiling because I feel great at that moment. But these are the, the moments where you, you know that, OK, I've done it. OK, let's focus on the next one. And the five goals, I mean, that's more history. The first Englishman yeah. ever to score five goals in a Premier League the game first, against The first foreigner. Foreigner, sorry, yeah. yeah. The first foreigner, and again, that was a moment where I joined that club, which I'm very proud of, actually, with Andy Cole, with Alan Shearer, later Sergio Aguero done it, and uh, Jermaine Defoe. And I thought you went big on statistics. No, no. That's I not a bad statistic I you just reeled I off I there. started to grow on that uh, yeah. after a while. <laughs> And uh, again, a special day for me because before that game, I didn't score for three or four or five games, maybe. And you know how it is with strikers. What is happening? Why he doesn't score? He's not good enough, blah, blah, blah. And the day before the game, Sir Alex was like, you're playing Berps the next day. So go out there, relax, play, you know? And you, you know how sometimes you just need that small encouragement, especially from the coach, so you can relax. And when I score first one, then I relaxed even more. For a striker point of view, when you score early goal, then you can open up even more and play even with more confidence. And after that, it was more easy for me. And I knew, just knew that whatever I kick the ball is going to be in the back of the net. You mentioned the little snippet there from Sir Alex and his man management. What, what was he like for you? What was he like to play under? I can't imagine you got the hairdryer at all. I didn't, actually. No, I uh, can't people, imagine. Yeah, people were asking me about that. I was lucky enough, but I witnessed the hairdryer at some of the players. It was not pleasant. It was uh, scary. Uh, sometimes it depends who he was giving hairdryer to. The player may respond 
and then there was even more tension, you know how it is, big ego. It was interesting to watch from the sidelines, but uh, this is how I think, in my opinion, winners do in the dressing room. You need to have that fire in yourself, especially in the training ground where we sometimes uh, a boiling point will be reached where, where players will go fighting because that was a foul. No, it was not a foul. And you start fighting. But then you leave it on the training ground, not in personal. In the dressing room, we still hug and kiss. In the pitch, we can yell at each other, leave it there, dressing room, hugs, kisses everywhere. And this how how was the boss as well. Uh, he knew that you needed this type of stuff. And obviously he was very good at knowing how to speak to everybody individually and what, what to say. Sometimes you, he can manipulate you in a good way, you know, so he can tell you you're not playing now, you're going to play the next game, you feel good enough, you know. These tricks that a manager needs to do, you know. Uh, and if you're smart enough, you pick something from that and you put it, even if your personal life, even later in your career, if you want to be a manager, for example, you need to upgrade constantly because one thing I remember for sure, he was telling us that the game of football is constantly changing and he needs to change with the football. Otherwise, he's going to be left behind. Can I put one thing to you? We're having a lot of fun here going down memory lane. I've, I've told people in the past that you're fascinating to talk to, but you've said a couple of times in this, I was a very private yeah. person. Do you think people that A, got the wrong perception of you and B, are you different now you've stopped playing? They did get the wrong perception of me because I was very shy and private and didn't put, uh, let anyone into my cycle. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe this is one of the things I would change if I, I have a chance to go back and be more open. For example, Anderson, he was kissing <laughs> people, hugging people, <laughs> high fiving like he was living he was a character, to be 100 fair. years. Yeah. And I'm looking from the side and I'm like, I wish to be like this, but it's just not me, you know, back in the day. This was I was thinking and I tried my best and for me it was more time to get integrated into the group. But one, once I get integrated, it was more easy for everybody to get to know me and like Berps. At first, you know, it, you just didn't talk with anyone, but now I understand. And now, if I was the same now, that would make me a stupid man. Hmm. To be the same guy who I was 10 or 12 years ago. I needed to change because I took different roles in my life, which leads for me to change as a human person, as a human being, and be more open about different stuff, not about everything. I am still a private man, but when I need and the situation call for, I need to be open with people, with talking and socializing, and also other quality that I need in what I'm doing right now. So I'm constantly trying to learn and change and upgrade myself in that regard. And I asked you this years ago, it's funny that some people used to watch you, did you used to smile and say, well, look at his style, look at the way he runs, look at, and get completely the wrong idea about you as a footballer. Does that still make you smile to, uh, to this day? Sometimes, yes. Because they don't know, do they? Yeah, but this is the, uh, sometimes the, not the problem, but this is how we are as a human being. We are judging before we had the chance to understand. This is, this is how we are. Sometimes it gets me angry. Sometimes I do understand. Sometimes I let myself to make the same mistake, judging before I understand the person in front of me. Uh, and it, it, it's okay. I, I uh, understand these type of things, but I always try to, um, to understand first who is sitting next to me, before who I'm talking to, then to judge. And if uh, people are still judging like that, I, my advice is to try to understand first and then you can judge. Finally, brilliant footballing memories. What is the future for Dimitar Berbatov? My future has been for the last year and a half uh, campaigning to be a president of the Bulgarian Football Federation back home. Uh, I have big plans where football should be going, in what direction. Uh, need to improve on every level back home because our level of football is not as it should be. Uh, we all remember that uh, race, uh, race, race scandal with England and Bulgaria, mm -hmm. uh, where our president of the Bulgarian Football Federation resigned, fully deserved so, but then he came back, uh, which was surprising to everyone. And since that day, we are trying to campaign that the football needs to be changed for better. 
and me and my team that I got around me, we are having our program, we are touring the country, speaking with the teams, because the team select the president, uh, etc. And this is my life now, busy with uh, this cause, this mission. Well, listen, very good luck with that. And thank you very much for sharing no those memories again. Great to thank see you, you again. Thanks, Dimitar.